Hi guys, welcome back. It's me, Chrissy. Today I'm painting a little winter scene. It's an actual real image in Lancashire, where I live in England. So I hope you enjoy this. It's like I say, a little winter scene. It's just going evening. And we'll see a little bit of the village below. And obviously the main focus will be drawing you down to the village as we've got the perspective there. So here I'm just using some Naples yellow deep and a tiny bit of cadmium yellow to put the nice uh, yellowy sky in. Adding some bits of white and a little pink there as well as you can see. And the dark values I'm using some indigo blue which is a really cool colour if you haven't got it. I recommend that you, you get it in your paint stash. I really like it. It's a similar to Prussian blue, but it's just got that nice, deeper, rich value to it, and it's not as transparent as Prussian blue. But I am here using a thin layer, as you can see. I'm putting it on with a nice, soft filbert brush. But I will dry that off and build uh, up the lights and darks as I go, as you'll see in the video. I hope you enjoy these guys. They're really nice to paint somewhere we're familiar with, actually in Lancashire where I'm actually from and if you do just leave a thumbs up and any comments obviously you can leave a comment and I'll get back to you. So there you go I've dried it all off and I'm coming back in with a darker colour now with the indigo blue so I've just added a little less white so it's more opaque so it covers uh, more over the actual lighter colour that I did before the lighter wash. I'm using a soft fill because I like to blend with these and they've got a nice springy texture to the brush so it gives you a nice easy application plus it's nice when you're using glazing so they hold quite a, a lot of fluid so it's nice to do dry brushing with them also. Same here with that nice indigo blue which is just a neat blue I'm just putting in some background trees uh, bush type here so I want this to contrast against the sky and the actual big tree that I'm going to put in the video as you'll see as we get further on. These are the actual stone walls so I'm blocking them in same with the indigo blue. I might be adding just a little bit of white here and there just to get a bit of contrast going. But we do build it up in layers like I said we're working in acrylics today on a 16 and a half by 11 and a half size canvas. Also remember, any brush you're comfortable with, you know, go with that. Don't go with just because somebody else is using it. Because sometimes you can just feel a little bit uncomfortable. Just use what you're comfortable with. So this is the actual storm wall going around the image and the path going down to a perspective point in the centre there. Same colour again, but I'm just adding a bit more white because I want that nice deep, shadowed snow to be here on the right hand side and on the pathway same colour again indigo blue with a tiny bit of white I've just added a tiny little bit of purple to that mixture just to break up the actual contrast a little bit but some areas mainly on the right hand side and behind the stone wall on the left they're going to be shadowed areas so we want to bear that in mind Now here I'm just misting out with that blue again with some white because I want it misty in the background like a wintry scene. Plus it'll push the background further back into the horizon so we've got that illusion of distance. I've just changed my little round detail brush. I'm just blocking in the little village scene we can see in the actual reference I'm painting. Just for that nice dark blue colour and a bit of Payne's grey to get some distant little houses or whatever, trees, or whatever they are in the distance. Can't really see them, they're that far away. So just use a, a Payne's grey. So I'm just marking in where I want my little gate. So I'm not over worried about that yet. I'm just blocking it in so I know it's there. I'm just making sure everything's mapped in. So that's what we do when we're blocking in a painting. We just block in things that we actually want to paint and then start your actual painting, if you will. 
sometimes you go back to stuff and you don't want it there so you can just like rub it off if it's wet or just paint over it so I've just drawn my tree and I've just used a, a white chalk pastel pencil just to get this tree in now I'm using a sword brush here or sometimes they're called a dagger brush they're really cool for doing branches and, and grasses and stuff like that I really like using this brush so you get a nice little point on the end just a bit more pointed than an actual angle brush it's slightly longer in the bristles also and it gives a really nice contrast using that nice dark colour so it's that indigo blue again and I've just added a tiny bit more Payne's grey to that mixture I want the nice contrast against the nice sky at the back even though it's going evening, you know, it's dusk, you still get that nice contrast. That's what I'm looking for. I'm just bringing that branch out a little bit more than it is on the reference because I, I preferred it that way. So you just change things that you think you want to change. You don't have to actually use the reference to the letter. You know, use a bit of artistic license and decide what you want to do. So now I'm using it quite dry, this brush, so there's no water on it. And what this brush does when it's dry, it'll spray its bristles because it's in a wedge brush, a sword brush. And you can actually get some really great detail with this, like a, some kind of loose foliage, if you will. It just gives that feathered feel to it. It just fans out the brush because it's dry and gives you them extra branches that you want in to block it in a bit more. Obviously, if you want finer detail, make sure it's wet and load your brush both sides. I've just added a tiny little blue in there just to break that up slightly, that bush. So it will be catching a tiny bit of light just on the left side there. The light just will be shining through just ever so slightly. So I'm glazing now. That back's dry there on the horizon. So I'm just glazing it over with that nice blue and white. Then I come back with some Naples yellow and do the same again. I want to make it look more distant than what it was. Like there's a haze, a misty haze. Now I've just gone to my liner brush just to define some looser, thinner branches just to fill it in a bit more because obviously when this tree's got leaves on it's a really big tree and it's full of leaves and foliage. I'm just filling in some more, just putting some more squiggly branches on. It just gives you that extra detail. This is a detailed piece of, uh, of art that I'm creating today. I hope you enjoy it, guys. If you do, leave us a thumbs up. I appreciate that as well. And I appreciate everybody that visits my channel and comments and interacts and watches all my videos. I really appreciate that also. I hope you enjoy them. If you like winter scenes, check my playlist out. You just click on my banner name, scroll across to playlists. Uh, you'll find everything you need in there and you can save them to your own playlist, create your own playlist. So I'm now coming back with a filbert brush. Uh, I, I like these brushes. I'm not paid to say this or anything like that. It's just a brush I prefer. They're called the Master Touch brushes. They're quite a nice stiff brush, but synthetic filament in them. And I do use these quite regular. I have them in filberts, I have them in flat brushes also. It's just to get that snow on the top there, on the top of the wall. But it's not a pure white. I'm still using some blue mixed in, so it's, look, it's really dulled down 
to a grey tone, grey value. So I'm roughly putting it in because I do come back, put some more dark values into the walls. I'm just sketching in where the actual snow's stuck for now and then I come back and alter things. Same here on the road. There's another pure white. I've still got some of that blue in there. But I'm not using a heavy application of paint. It's only a thin layer. So don't load up too much paint. And behind this wall, I want it fairly dark because it is in shadow. So I've just added a bit more blue. It's a cold, frosty day, obviously, and obviously the sun's going down now, so we're getting into evening time. You can see how thin that layer is because you can still see underneath the actual values I've put in on the base coat there. So don't use a heavy application of paint if you can avoid that. Just try and do nice thin layers and build it up gradually. Because that gives you a realistic feel to your work also when you work in thin layers. So you can see I'm putting some more darks in on the side of the road there because it's actually where the actual grass ends onto the road side. So I'm just adding some more dark values in while I'm waiting for everything to dry. I'm using a little round brush, a little detail brush. I'm lightening up as I go, but it's still not pure white. Remember, don't go too light too soon because you'll lose all the effect that you're looking for. So now I've come back to my nice soft filbert brush, which is a different brush than I were using on the actual wall. It's a lot softer. And I can move the paint around by dry brushing like I'm doing here. So there you go, I'm putting some more dark bits into the wall, the actual stone wall. Just to break it up slightly. But you do that, you go over stuff and you have to come back and uh, reapply your values again. Not a problem. It's all part of the process. And now I'm putting back the snow that's actually stuck to the wall. And as you can see, the highlighted bits are mainly on top of the wall where the actual sun's just catching the last bit of the reflections before the sun goes down. Remember, like I'm doing here, keep your dark values in. Any questions? about anything, like I said, leave us a comment. If you need to know anything, I'll try and answer it to the best of my ability, obviously. And it's nice to interact with people and see who's been visiting my channel. I like to know if you've popped along and watched anything. It's nice, you know what I mean? I like to interact with people. Same in the Facebook group, you can join that as well. We're very active in there and supportive. The link for that will be in the description box below this video. And there'll be other links in there if you want to check them out to other paintings and uh, other things you might be interested in. So I'm going back with blue cast again. So I'm just using some ultramarine blue here with a tiny bit of purple and white on the road, a thin layer. I'm leaving that to dry and I'm building the snow up onto the actual stone wall again. Then going back in with my detail brush to break it up a little bit so it does indicate it's a stone wall. So I'm putting some more shapes in. So I have lots of stone walls in England, especially in the countryside. 99% of stone walls. Which is nice because I like, you know, they're nice to see. They're organic and uh, they fit nice with nature, don't they? 
And some of them are really old. You know, they were built years and years and years ago by uh, village people or farmland people. And sometimes you use quite a lot of stones out of the river to build up walls and stuff. It's very interesting and fascinating history. We have lots of history in England. We go way back. But then I'm just breaking that snow bank up, as you can see there. I'm just putting some little twiglet things on the, this bush. It's just not as round looking. So it's got some little sticky bits out on it. Sticky bits, is that a term? Well, it is now. <laughs> Now I've put this little glow in here, it's the thin glaze for now, but I will be going over that because the sun's actually shining through that gate. So I'm just tinting that slightly. It's a bit prominent at the moment, but I do go over it. So remember thin layers. I do the same behind the gate as well. So make sure everything's dry first before you come back in. I'm just adding a little pink, a little tiny bit of magenta and purple and white here. So I've really washed it out with some white. Just to give that tint of colour that I artistically added myself. Sometimes everything's not in the reference and if you want to add something, you can do. That's the beauty of the freedom of creating a painting. I'm building all that little snow bank there as well. Obviously they scooted the snow to the side there so it's off the road as such. That would be a little detail brush, just with some little highlights here, even there. And I use a small brush for this because it stops you doing too much. Do you know what I mean? If you went in with a big brush, you tend to do more coverage. And I didn't want that effect today, so I'm using a little brush. It takes a bit more time, but you get a nicer feel to it and more detailed work using a small brush. I'm just putting a tint of that purple in again that I used on the left side under the stone wall, that bluey purple. Just to break up the snow a bit and give it a bit of contrast. It's a beautiful scene, just looking down, just going evening time, looking down on the village there. Nice and chilly, so we have to get wrapped up, obviously. It'd be nice just to have a wander down that path, wouldn't it? Have a nice walk and look over the wall or the gate. And then go and visit the village. There's a little church there. It's just got a little light glowing in the distance. Nice feel about it, doesn't it? Nice calming feel as well. I can say this is my hometown in Lancashire. It's a scene in Lancashire where I'm from, in England. You could create this in a different uh, atmosphere, obviously, somewhere where you get reminded of somewhere you've been or somewhere you live. Obviously, you could do that. Just put a bit of snow on them tree trunks. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I enjoyed painting this for you. Like I said, check the Facebook group out. If you want, the link's there. Subscribe. That's cool as well because you'll get notified when I upload a video. And leave us a thumbs up. On the screen now are two videos you may like to watch. And if you're not already subscribed, click on my face and be sure to click the icon bell to get a notification. As always, thanks for watching and create something wonderful. See you all soon on my next video.